Aside from being a great place for Philadelphia cheesesteaks, water ice, and soft pretzels, Philadelphia is famously known for its rich history in our country. There are so many sites and locations to visit while here in the city of brotherly love. It can sometimes be overwhelming for tourists who visit, but you can learn so much in one day. The Liberty Bell, Independence Hall, and the Betsy Ross House are all awesome locations to explore. However, sometimes people forget about the other sites in the city, such as the Fairmount Waterworks and the dam on the Schuylkill River. If you are interested in hearing more about these two places, you have come to the right place. Hi, my name is Tom, and today we are, are going to talk about the Fairmount Waterworks, which is a national historic landmark located in the Art Museum area in Fairmount. The waterworks was the main source of water in the old days. It worked by having two steam engines pump fresh water from the school kill into a tunnel along Chestnut Street to the pumping station. From there, it distributed water to citizens through board log pipes throughout the city. Soon, the engines started to break down frequently, and the reservoir needed to be constantly refilled to keep the engines running. The city officials realized that they needed to expand the waterworks because the city was growing fast and they needed to provide water for everyone. The Schuylkill is a spillway. Its main job was to direct water into the turbines, which then pumped water up to the reservoir where the art museum now stands. This picture shows the waterworks and behind it is the art museum. Now who is ready to see the waterworks in person? If you do, come along. I will be your tour guide. So now we are at the Fairmount Waterworks. To my right, the art museum. And to my left, there's the Schuylkill Dam. To my left is the Welcome Bit Center of Fairmount Waterworks. The Fairmount Waterworks wasn't where it stands today. The first waterworks was built in 1799 at Center Square, later to be the site of City Hall. So now I'm going to talk to you about the history of the Fairmount Waterworks and how it came to be. It all started with a young engineer named Frederick Graff, who was a superintendent of the waterworks in 1811. He proposed that they should build a new and larger facility of the waterworks in Fairmount, which was just to the northwest of the city boundary and at the school kills edge. The watering committee agreed to his idea, so a plot of land was reserved in, the Fairmount, in Fairmount and the construction began on April 1st, 1811. The first steps of the construction were two steam engines, just like the ones in Center Square, except these were housed in one building, so if one of them stop working or broke down, the other one would take over the job. The, stu the two steam engines either had a low or high pressure. The low pressure steam engine was a Bolton and Watts style engine built by Samuel Richards. The high pressure steam engine was a Colombian non-condensing steam engine built by Oliver Evans at the Mars Works in Philadelphia. The basic construction was an engine house, which held two steam engine pumps and boilers. In 1819, Graff evaluated the cost to be $31,000 annually for each of the two steam engines, considering the amount of wood needed to be burned to fuel them, plus the maintenance and hiring people to 
to work the engines. The cost was high for the city at that time, so Graf said that the city should dispose of that idea and build a spillway dam instead. The dam would be at an angle across the Schuylkill River so the, so the water power could drive the pumps. This design helped protect the dam from injuries such as floods and ice, which were both dangerous for the Schuylkill River. The city agreed to grass plan, so the structure of the dam started in 1890. Ariel Cooley was assigned to build the dam, the locks and canals, as well as the head arches and mill race. It took time and strength to build the dam, but two years later, the dam was completed. It was 2,008 feet long, and the first flow of water was over the dam was on July 23, 1821. While building the dam and after it was accomplished, there were many questions and concerns about the dam's reliability and structure, but it never broke down. The changes in water power saved the city lots of money, but the most amazing thing happened in 1844. The Fairmount Water Works supplied about 3 to 5 million gallons of water per day to everyone that lived in the city. In 1865, a new crib was sunk in front of the old dam, which made it necessary to place new cribs in front of the 1865 cribs, and a new dam was built on top in 1872. All the changes that happened made the overfall of the dam move 38 feet beyond the original line of the dam, so a new pier had to be constructed. Unfortunately, during the Industrial Revolution, companies north of Philadelphia constantly dumped pollution and waste into the Schuylkill River. The water was so bad by 1883 that a physician offered $50 to anyone who could drink about a quart of it 10 nights in a row without dying or vomiting. To prevent pollution, the city added filtration and new pumping, pump, pumping stations near the Schuylkill and Delaware rivers. The Fairmount Waterworks has been given awards and recognized as a national treasure by the federal government. In 1975, the American Society of Civil Engineers declared the Fairmount Waterworks a National Historic Civil Engineering Landmark. On May 11, 1976, it was designated a National Historic Landmark made by the U.S. Secretary of the Interior. In 1977, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers made the waterworks a National Historic Me Mechanical Engineering Landmark. Today, if you wanted to visit the Fairmount Waterworks, you would see people walking, running, bicycling, and, and even visiting the Fairmount Waterworks Museum. Before there was a museum, there were mechanics and machinery below the waterworks. Now there are no more mechanics, but instead a museum that attracts tourists. In the museum, there are signs that you can read to learn more about the history of the Fairmount Waterworks. Sometimes my family and I visit the museum and also see the Schuylkill River. We live in the neighborhood, so it doesn't take us long to get there. Usually on beautiful weekends, my dad and I go running, and the route that we take takes us right by the art museum, the Fairmount Waterworks on the Schuylkill, and the Waterworks Museum. Hopefully, by watching this podcast, you have learned something that you might not have known before. I hope that you visit the Fairmount Waterworks on the Schuylkill Dam, 
underscore kill jam at some point. Thank you for listening and watching my podcast.